So last night, I was thinking about a way for us to talk. And I began to think about um, the great Sergio Leone, who directed the film The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. And at that film, in the end, there's a scene where the three characters have a duel. And When I they look at each other's eyes. Yes. <laughs> and it goes on for a very long time, and it's only music. But I began to think about us in that category, that in a way, we are three individuals all searching for gold in our creativity. And I thought it could be a kind of a funky question to ask which one of us would be the good and the bad and the ugly. Like, how would you see yourself in what role? Like, who would you be? I can be any. If I would be an actor, I would play. In life, you are more or less uh, everything. Sometimes you're good, sometimes you're bad. I think I would be the ugly. <laughs> okay, so feel safe. It's true that this situation <laughs> is a bit like that. It's like we're all, our eyes go cross and path. Maybe we can start talking about why we decided to work together and uh, I can start saying why I, I like the idea because I think that in these difficult moments to enlarge the conversation, to know more of other people's opinion. More and more, the problem of fashion is that uh, more and more is required. Seems that to do good clothes sometimes is, is not enough because we have a lot of social relevance, uh, millions of people, followers, and so on, and uh, fashion is kind of becoming a pop, uh, a pop thing. I uh, think about, uh, I always try to say something, of course, uh, with my shows, uh, to get the spirit of the moment, or doing maybe a subtle criticism, something happening, and try to answer with my job, with my only instrument, to what I see around. So now the fact that you are here, for me, it's like making the conversation more rich and possibly more interesting. And, and because we spoke about uh, humanity, crudeness, uh, whatever we will talk about after, the idea of this home, of the home, it's a great idea, but maybe if we talk about it. Well, I think the, um, in a way, we come from such separate worlds, but they're worlds that are very depending on each other in a way. You know, creativity has so many tentacles, but it all leads back to the same spider, even though it's a giant web. Obviously, what we're doing right now, fashion, in a more futuristic approach, you know, that everything is becoming more infused into each other. It's becoming more like one stream of constant just accessibility. And because screens are so much our life now, we depend so much on what we see. And everything we see is based on how we react. What I like about uh, your movie the, or the beginning of these shorts that <clears throat> we are playing in the room is that <clears throat> there is the bathroom, the kitchen, uh, the bedroom, and the living room. And so it goes to essential of life. So because at the end, uh, a lot of things happen in the home and they can represent what's relevant. And for me, the only interesting part of my job in this moment is trying to do something useful. And this time we did something that uh, were relating to this idea. We, we talked about crude, we talked about raw. Uh, Especially uh, we talk a lot about reality also. I am very interested in the idea of an abstract narrative. Um, and since forever, kind of, I like the idea that you have a narrative, but you can't really literally uh, 
um, analyze it. And I find it very interesting when people have the ability to actually achieve something like that. Like, what inspires you? Like, what gets you? But that, that goes both ways, I, I guess. I mean, I think that's what is for us very natural. It's a very natural, instinctive, ongoing process. Also because probably it's your, it's your work to yeah. represent reality It's all, it's all nature, clothes. I would almost say. That's all nature. I think the same about so many creative people whom, whose work I find uh, phenomenal. Our work is to transform ideas, vision uh, in an object. It's our job, so for us it's natural to think about all these different elements because, of course, when you do the company, the fashion show, it, it's, it's a lot of different things. You transform your beliefs in your movie and we transform our beliefs uh, in what people would need to I think dress. in the core it's not so different. I think in the core it's like what's, what's going on in your, in, your, in your brain, in your mind, in your heart and you feel, as a creative animal, I think you do feel constantly this desire to bring out what's in you, in terms of, you know, like, creative outing, let's say. And then it's a medium. Like, for you, it's the medium is directing. For us, the medium is the collections. A director is an artist. We are creative people dedicated to company. We, we work for a company who has to sell stuff. So we can be as creative as, as we can, but I never saw myself as an artist. You, as a film director, you are an artist, as a profession. But what's an artist? I always ask myself that question because I never went to school. I dropped out of film school. Did you go? No, I, I started and I dropped out. And everyone got very angry at me because they felt it was very arrogant. But my mother always said I was a genius, so <laughs> I had the confidence of arrogance. It's difficult to be an artist because when you have the whole possibility, it's even more difficult. Yeah, it's like I, I almost, because I feel very envious of your uh, feel because I like, oh my God, look at all that easy creative freedom they have. God, I have to fight for mine every day. I consider myself an expressionist because I express what I feel and hopefully some people will like it and some people will eventually hate it but I always feel that's the only way that you can achieve anything if it's, it's not very different from us I think when we started it's the same you have the desire to do it and then actually I think that our freedom is we, we have more freedom if people like what we do. You know what I mean? Like, we, can, we, we have obviously the freedom to do what we want to do, but I think you, are, you have more freedom if people like what you do. Because it's like Mutual says, it's not art what we do. We create a product for people. We are creating and we have to be creative in a different context, I would but say. But people need to like it, otherwise it cannot exist, because if people won't like it and they don't buy it, then we cannot exist. It cannot exist without people. And what about failure? I always... Failure? Well, I mean, it's a constant, you know, friend of ours named failure. And I, in the beginning of my life, I didn't know it existed in the beginning, because in the beginning you don't know <laughs> failure. And then I experienced terrible failure, and I suddenly had a new friend in my life called failure. I agree. Or disappointment. We, or, all, we all have that. And it's like, I have found um, he has been a big part of my life. Now he's a friend, the failure. He became a friend because I figured out how to trick failure. I found a way to ch put him in checkmate. Because at a certain point, I realized I was not going to be the greatest. And that was also okay. 
but then I was going to be the greatest at what I did. And I, you know, having a mother that supported me very much all my life, maybe it came from that. But how do you, I'm interested in, because I deal with it very practically now, you know, that it's all around me, but I found a way to put it in its place because you cannot be, no one can ever take away your authenticity. You can never be criticized for being real. But still, we live certainly more than ever in a society that is so judgmental of everything we do. So we have to watch every word we say now. Every, our thoughts have to be watched. We are very conscious more than ever. We're in a way less free. Yeah. Even though we are in an interesting time of evolution and accessibility and there's so much of everything, we're in a way not very free because of what's going on right now. And so failure has kind of come back to kind of haunt, at least in my situation, a little bit, but I have to put failure checkmate again. I think it's a constant part of your life. Thanks God, very often is a failure here, a success there. So basically, uh, it balances out. not is a, the total failure of, uh, of everything. So, but sometimes you fail in something, sometimes you succeed in something. Of course, it's always present, and you fear the and, and you fear it uh, the day you're not able anymore to do anything, and anything you do, it's wrong, and so on. What I do think, which relates, is that I think that the next always needs to be better. We need, you know, I always feel like ah, uh, I want to do better. I want to do better, mm. uh, which clearly doesn't always work, of course, <laughs> which is then maybe the failure. But, but it needs to be that, uh, the, it needs to be like that. I need to think that the next one needs to be better. Um, I think otherwise I would stop, because I think you need to have that challenge. You need to have the challenge to make it better, or more interesting, more exciting, more whatever you want it to be. I've suddenly realized right now in this conversation how how at least for me of a personal thing it's turned into i mean all these ideas that we have been talking about for the last six months and meeting about and some things work some things didn't but now that it's all becoming it has a great philosophy because i think in a way it's like an expression of what it's like to be an artist i think it's a beautiful thing and I, I want to thank you both for giving me that opportunity to, to be part of this. Thank you to you.